I'm Mark, poet with a guitar, and I'm here in Michigan, and I'm part of the Poets Reacts with a panel of my esteemed poets, and today we're going to listen and watch a poet who I've never seen before perform a poem, and we're just going to react to it and talk poetry. <laughs> and we have a guest again tonight. James will join us, and Marissa will introduce herself, and James. Hi, Marissa. Hello, everyone. I'm picturing Mark like in his Def Leppard jean jacket and his leather pants on like, yeah. And then, no, I don't. And maybe not. All right. He's <laughs> got the law and glasses. Law and we are missing you tonight, my Miss friend. But don't worry. We have brought some extra help here tonight at the Poets Reacts. We got James, Mr. Speaker Sears in the building. I'm so excited to be bringing him to you all tonight. Uh, I am a poet, spoken word artist, and publisher from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and follow to everything that we do here at the Poets Reacts. We want to be number one, right? The number two is first loser. We want to be number one. Not, not everyone gets a trophy in this organization, and we want to win. So you got to follow us. It, be cutthroat and just love us more, please. <laughs> Uh, also, if you're going to be doing artwork with Kevin tonight, uh, please put up your artwork and, and share it with us. We'd love to see what it is you're doing. Use the chat, type away, ask us questions, interact with us. We absolutely love to do that. So without further ado, my esteemed colleagues, please welcome Mr. James, Mr. Speaker Sears. Good evening. Glad to be here. I am uh, honored to be standing in for Lau. And uh, I'm Mr. Speaker, I'm the guy with words. So I'll pass it over to Ms. Gimlin. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much, Mr. James. Mr. Speaker, it's so nice to have you in the house. We are so glad you are here. And hello, Mark. Hello, Marissa. Love being Hi, here in this space with you always. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kimlin, and I am a, a spoken word uh, actor, singer, uh, and a visual artist from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, but I am originally from Singapore and I love my Singapore beats. Hi, beats. All right. So today we have an exciting poem. And I think if I am correct, it's going to be a video. So without further ado, please send in the video. And the article says, the Mexican government confiscates approximately 30,000 illegal firearms per year. When the guns are taken, they get dismantled and the metal is used to make other types of weapons that will later be utilized by their military. In 2012, Pedro Reyes, an artist from Mexico City, convinced his government to donate the guns to him. And he turned them all into musical instruments. So somewhere there's a tambourine, a drum set, a guitar, all made out of things that were used to take people's lives. But now they create a sound that puts life back into people's bodies, which is to say a weapon will always be a weapon, but we choose how we fight the war. And from this, I learned, and from this, I learned, and from this, I learned that even the most destructive instruments can still create a melody worth dancing to. And sometimes don't we also call that a battle? I wonder how long it took to convince the first rifle that it can hold a note in Instead of a bullet but still fire into a crowd and make everyone move when i was six when i was six when i was six i was taught how to throw a punch in the 80s that was the anti-bullying movement the first time the first time one of my classmates took a yo mama joke a little too far i remembered my training so i turned his nose into a fountain my fist five pennies i closed my eyes i made a wish i came home with bloody knuckles and it was the first piece of artwork my family hung on the fridge i remember staring at my hands the same way you stare at a midterm when all your aunt are correct. I didn't know what class this was, but I did know I was passing and isn't that what masculinity has become? A bunch of dudes afraid of their own feelings, terrified of any emotion other than anger, constantly yelling at the shadows on the wall, but still haven't realized that we're the ones standing in front of the light. We learn how to dodge a jab. We learn how to step in before we swing. We learn the heart is the same size as the fist, but we keep forgetting they don't have the same functions. We keep telling each other to man the fuck up when we don't know what the fuck that even means. We turn our boys into bayonets, we point them in the wrong direction, we pull their triggers, and then we ignore all the damage they're doing in the distance. The word repurpose, it means to take an object and give it amnesia. It means to make something forget what it's been trained to do so it can use it for a better reason. I am learning that this body...
body is not a shotgun. I am learning that this body is not a pistol. I am learning that a man is not defined by what he can destroy. I am learning that a person who only knows how to fight can only communicate in violence, and that shouldn't be anyone's first language. I'm learning the difference between a garden and a graveyard. It's only what you choose to put in the ground. You see, once. Once. I came across a picture of a strange looking violin. The caption said that it was made out of a rifle. And I thought to myself, you know, if someday that could be me. Because of the, um, the events that have transpired this year, especially as we uh, near the end of the year. Um, the things that have been transpiring in this country, I feel like this is something that we were talking about four years ago and it is still so ripe um, in the hearts and minds of Americans right now in our current events. And, um, you know, he says we, <laughs> we point them in the direction and we pull the trigger and we don't think about what's downrange, you know, Mm, this is to me, or I'm just uh, separating it from the, the topical theme, the delivery and the way he did this thing. And to me, it almost kind of defines, you know, I live my whole life like in a, in, in a little bit of a box of page poetry, you know, as I was, as I was brought up to know poetry and all the rest. And this is a different kind of a poetry that I'm really learning to uh you know, to, 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 you know, to love and to really respect and the way this, the way, what was the name of the artist again? I'm so sorry. Francisco. Guy, oh, Francisco. This is Rudy Francisco. 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 This is, yeah. yeah, Rudy Francisco. Yeah, he, I mean, he start he starts off, at first he started off so, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, prosaically and kind of talking and I was getting a little concerned that it, we're going with this, you know, it's like talking to me at the bar. And then it builds and he builds and he builds and it, the crescendo goes up and up and up. And then he, then he starts to introduce devices of performance, re repetition, and his voice goes high and it, it, it just builds and builds and builds to a certain point. We get more involved in it. It was really masterfully performance. And then he hits a certain spot and then he hits into the coda which is very soft and gentle to end it off, like a musical piece, you know, just like starting with a couple of instruments and then putting the whole orchestra and the chorus in at the end. So, yeah, I mean, it's a masterful work. As far as a page poem, I think it has to be performed. If I were to have this in front of me in a magazine or in a book. I have it on the page, Mark. How does it work? Really? How does it work? So I'll, I'll, I'll show you right now. So the reason I picked this poem, so first of all, we, we don't get paid. Uh, to bring these poets up, at least not right now. And we, we don't get paid to promote material on this show. Um, I had signed up for um, Rudy Francisco's book because I, um, I'm really inspired a lot by him as a page poet. And so I signed up, I got his book and I got it a signed copy. So Rudy, you're coming on this show. I'm putting it out there to the universe. Rudy, you're coming on my show, on our show. Uh, so this is how he has oh, wow. it. Okay. Let me see if I can open it and I can see. everything's yeah, a little backwards for me on this camera. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is how it yeah. lays on the page. And how many people? So what I did on what I did on my Instagram show was, you know, I, I have Feel Good Fridays where I read exclusively from other poets' books from their work, and I picked his book because I had just received his book that week, and I just flipped randomly and I flipped to this poem, uh, right? Well, Rifle Two, <clears throat> anyway, Rifle Rifle Two, and um, I read it, and I read it from his page poetry on my show and it was incredibly moving and the way people resonated with it in the show and, and the dialogue that followed, I said, we have to do this on TPR. And with the things that have been happening recently in the U S and in the news and in our, in what's happening here recently, this had to, this was a poem we had to do almost in response to the gun violence. Yeah. Um, so this is the, the reacts to it. Oh, wow, okay. The crossbars wow. and the parts are all like parts, parts of what I know. <coughs> from the, 
And when yeah. when oh, before so we cool. finish tonight, I'll read you his little bio in his book before we finish tonight. Yeah. Kevin, that's great. So, Thank uh, you. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy is a professional poet. So that's why you were able to go through the ups and downs. I mean, he's a professional slam poet as well. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's a professional. His delivery is off the top. The writing is even above that. But what I would say to you, let's let's. And I wanted to give him his props because I got to move on to the poem, which is even bigger, because this is a recovery poem. We look at what we do to people, what society does to people, sometimes necessary, sometimes unnecessary. But somebody is in a place and they need to be brought back to love. They need to be brought back to recovery as a retired soldier. I live this poem. I mean, I live in the space of this poem. I've been made into an instrument that doesn't fit back here in America. And so when you hear somebody who's not a soldier thinking on the lines of how do we recover something that was designed to hurt into something that's designed to heal and help. And, and I got so much out of it, the, the men's feelings and men's emotions and, 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 and where you are and what people label you to be and then, and then where, you, where you can be is where I saw in this poem. And I just thought it was a beautiful rendition of somebody trying to recover somebody who may be lost. And we need that today more than anything. And James, I really appreciate that as someone that's thinking about recovery and the metaphor of a, of a gun. And, uh, and I think about how we human beings can be guns and destroy other people. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, our body should not be used as shotguns and pistols and to hurt others. And we should not be hurting one another the way we are. And uh, because there's more uh, than one way to kill a person's spirit. And, and, and you, you hit it on the spot. Words, labels. I mean, and I would just tell you that this just this week it was uh labeling these kids uh of uh, uh, attention uh, you know attention deficit or whatever. You just put these kids in these categories and you want to lock them there and almost throw away the key and say you yeah. will always be this and like there's no recovery from it and there's lots of recovery from it with love. Yeah, yes, what was masterful, I think, also was, you know, finding a, a metaphor. Uh, in this case, the the the, the instruments being made out of the, uh, the the you know out of guns, and carrying that through, keeping focused within that because that's you know rather than turn it once it's a metaphor, it no longer becomes a speech. You know, it becomes a poem. It, it becomes, becomes a, a story, right? A movie. Yes. An image that we because an image that we remember. I mean, it's just not you know it's it's just not a it's an ad, you know, the way, the, the way it sticks because that's the art. So I think that, it, that having found, having found the metaphor was one thing and the way he introduced it and then how we continue to evolve and develop it the whole way through just made it that much stronger on us. It was very masterfully done. I want to but, thank Marissa for bringing this wonderful poem and poet to us very much. Thank there you. There was no one else I really, I wanted to share <laughs> this poem with and Mr. Speaker, you know, I just, uh, you should come in and co-host again. I was, I, I'm sure I speak for everyone when, when I say that we would love to have you back sometime. Um, so this, this uh, video is from the 2017 Individual World Poetry Slam Finals. This poem is titled Rifle by Rudy Francisco. <clears throat> I'll read you his bio from his book. His book is Helium. Yeah, Rudy, I'm plugging your book. So I hope you actually will come on my come on our show sometime. This would be amazing. Uh, so it says, Rudy Francisco is one of the most recognizable names in spoken word poetry. He was born, raised, and still resides in San Diego, California. At the age of 21, Rudy completed his BA in psychology and decided to continue his education by pursuing a, an MA in organizational studies. As an artist, Rudy Francisco is an amalgamation of social critique, introspection, honesty, and humor. He uses personal narratives to discuss the politics of race, class, gender and religion while simultaneously pinpointing and reinforcing the interconnected nature of human existence. Please, you know, if y'all have not had a chance to, to watch him, you can find him on YouTube. You can find him on YouTube on our show. <laughs> He's going to come and make it to our show. He's yeah, got to come. So. He's got to come at yeah. some point. 
but go get his book. I mean, the, he has inspired many poems of mine and he has his My Honest Poem, which I, ins I call other poets to write their own My Honest Poem. And uh, maybe he'll do his My Honest Poem on our show sometime. Yeah. Well, thank you. And thank you, James, by the way, for, yes. for coming on, man. Really. And thank you for uh, for also uh, being willing to serve and uh, serve our country in the capacity that you have, um, James. Uh, yes, thank you for your you service. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was an honor. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, well, we definitely love you and adore you just the way you are. Uh, so yes, if if you are not uh, following Mr. Speaker, please follow him. Mr. Speaker Sears uh, is is everywhere: Facebook, Instagram. You, you should just follow him. He's incredible. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you all so much for being here t t tonight. My esteemed colleagues, our very special guest co-host. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, for being here. Remember, like, share, subscribe, and follow to everything that we do at the Poets Reacts and Poetry Global Network. We want to be number one because we are the best show. I need you to help us get there by like, sharing, and subscribing to everything that we do. And as we react live, to poems we've never heard, read, or, or seen before. We do hope you take action with your pen so that someday maybe we'll be reacting to your pen. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye.